Sí. Sí. Hello guys, it's Game Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we finally have the B350 versus X570 video today. Yeah. So this video had to be postponed because I was really sick these days, so 39 degrees fever and after the 37 degrees you start getting uh, and my throat, my throat, my throat hurt a lot, so I couldn't really make this video, but we are doing it today. Well, initially I was going to do something like performance-wise, performance only, performance only, B350, the same exact build, the same CPU, the same RAMs, at the same frequency, at the same timings, exactly the same. So, B350 Strix versus X570 Strix. That was what I was going to do, but I decided after to add some features. So, uh, talking a bit about the USBs, about the, um, the NVMEs, uh, the storage, well, the storage, the SATA ports, the... All that, th all those things, for example, the capacitors, the VRMs, and all those things. I decided to do that later because I wanted you to learn about it, and I was teaching the best way I can. So the video will consist, in fact, with features and then performance. So first, I'll show you the, the, the differences on features, and then I will go into the performance side. And well guys, there's not much more to say, let's go to the benchmarks. But before that, let's have a word from our sponsor of today. The sponsor of today is Skillshare. But what is Skillshare? Well, Skillshare is a worldwide platform that focuses mostly on teaching. You have like thousands of classes, and when I say thousands, I literally mean thousands of classes. You have, for example, acting classes, you have art classes, you have HTML and CSS classes, which matters more, for example, for, for you. I, I think it matters more. The ones that really, that I really, really loved, which were the Photoshop classes, these ones were really, really good, I must tell you, and were the ones I enjoyed the most, of course. Uh, and like I said, you have thousands of classes and at an affordable price. You have the monthly pack of 14 euros, which gives roughly uh, 15.8 dollars. So for 15 dollars, you can have access to thousands of classes. And you can pick, for example, for example, you can pick the annual pack and the price will be reduced to 8 euros, so roughly 9 dollars. So with this, you have out of the box 42% discount. And you can go even further and go to the link in the description and have two free months of endless and limitless learning. Skillshare. So now, let's start with the more eye-catchy features, where the differences can be seen. And this, of course, is more like a board versus board than not like a chipset versus chipset, but maybe fun to watch. Well, for example, funny enough, we have the same number of USB ports on both motherboards, a thing I wasn't quite expecting, I must say. Both of them have 8 USB ports, but of course the difference is mainly in the type of ports you have. The fastest type USB you had in the B350 was USB 3.1, and we're only two of them, so we're only two of them, two, okay? While the rest of them were normal USB 3.0. In the X570, you have four, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, three of our common type, which is the Type A, and one Type C used most commonly on current smartphones. All the other ports are, for example, USB 3.0, I think, maybe USB 3.1. We also have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 connection to the front panel if needed. As for the audio codec, it is still the same. May have some improvements, who knows, but at least for the version, it is still the same. The only thing sound-wise that changed is that we now have gold-plated audio jacks, which helps eliminating some background noises. A good thing. In terms of storage, we have space for two NVMe SSDs instead of just one, and it now uses PCI Express 4 instead of the older PCI Express 3 that we all know. The same PCI Express 4 will be used on GPUs providing way more bandwidth, 
actually way more bandwidth than any gamer will need. <laughs> As for SATA ports, we do have two more SATA ports compared to the B350. Now going to the more overclocking and performance wise stuff. I am not good enough in this area to go and ditch things, but simplifying to the max we have way better power phases, 4 plus 4 in the B350 compared to 12 plus 4 in the X570. I think these are divided by CPU and SOC, so Infinity Fabric. So 12 phases for the CPU on X570 instead of only 4 phases in the B350, meaning it can deliver a lot more power if needed. We also have way better capacitors and even better VRMs. The motherboard VRMs make sure a PC is maintaining its CPU voltage requirements. Power from the power supply goes into the VRMs first, where it's regulated to stay under the CPU's max voltage before being sent out. Most modern CPUs use less than 1.5 volts. In Ryzen's case, it isn't really a good thing to go much over 1.4 volts. We also have better chipset, which will allow us, for example, to overclock our CPU or RAM a bit further. And it is actually made by AMD this time. In case of RAM speeds, we can go over 4000 MHz with proper kits. Things like these aren't simply possible on B350. We also have the ability to select manual voltages instead of offset voltages and we know that we're good even with offset voltages since our VRMs are top notch. To match this all we also have a much better cooling system, being it for VRMs, capacitors or even chipsets. Overall we have better USB ports, more storage options, being it NVMe or SATA 3 ports, better memory support. PCI Express 4 and top-notch components for better overclocking or for supporting higher-end CPUs. Ok, this is all good and all, but how does it fare in terms of performance? Let's see. Well people, today we start with CPU sided tests, and the first one is Assassin's Creed Origins. Here we can clearly see that almost all results are within the margin of error. At 1080p it seems to be a bit worse on the X570, maybe because it is still an early bias. At 1440p and 4K, the tendency is to get a bit more FPS on the X570, maybe due to the PCI Express 4. Still, nothing relevant. The second game is Far Cry 5, another CPU dependent title. Here we see exactly no difference between both motherboards and chipsets, and of course, the differences presented at 1080p are all within the margin of error. So nothing to see here. Moving to the next one. Now we have CSGO. 
these results are pretty equal once again. At 1080p, 570 streaks scores 12 FPS more. But percentage wise, since we have 500 FPS, we are talking of a difference of roughly 3%, which can also be within the margin of error. But well, not too much to see here once more. Moving on. Now on Rainbow Six Siege. In this game we can see a tendency of X570 having a bit higher FPS numbers in all resolutions. I think this is once again due to the fact of X570 having PCI Express 4. Still Vega 56 would never even be enough to make PCI Express 3 struggle, so let alone PCI Express 4. Now going into the more GPU-sided games, firstly with For Honor. This is a game that heavily relies on the GPU side of things, and once again we can see the tendency of 1 or 2 FPS more on the X570. But apart from that the results can be called as completely equal, and X570 brings nothing more over B350, in this case. The second GPU-sided game is Shadow of War, and here we have once again the same results. Not much more to see here, all results are within the margin of error, and having a 300 bucks motherboard or a 80 bucks motherboard will bring you exactly the same results when using a mid-end CPU like this one. The last game tested is Need for Speed Payback, with a gameplay on the hyperspace circuit. Interestingly enough, I tested this game several times, and the results were always the same. This is the only game where clear differences can be seen. With the X570 we indeed have lower FPS numbers at 1080p, but the values at 1440p are a bit higher. This not talking about the 4K results, which are really a game changer. In this game, it seems that X570 streaks will bring a decent performance boost at 4K. I myself thought that these results couldn't be possible, but after several tests, there are no doubts. An astonishing boost when playing Need for Speed Payback at 4K resolution. To end the testing phase we have Cinebench R15 tested, and once again no changes are noticed. The single core performance is exactly the same, while the multi core performance raised by 2 points. <laughs> Which means exactly nothing. Let's see the conclusion. 
So guys, concluding, is it worth to upgrade to X570 streaks from a B350, 350 streaks? Is it worth or not? In my opinion, no, a big no. So unless you have strictly needs, for example, you have needs for more, for more SATA ports, you have needs for PCI Express 4, a thing that you can find on other motherboards, um, but unless you have strictly those needs of having the PCI Express 4 or unless for example you are using or you are going to use um, top tire CPU for example the Ryzen 9 uh, 3950X unless you are on those on those things or on, on that boat um, the upgrade isn't really worth okay you have way better VRMs you have uh, way better capacitors, you can overclock further um, but for what? you can do almost exactly the same on a B350 or you are better for example buying a X500 and, uh, X470 sorry and you have um, a way better, you have way better VRMs and way better capacitors for example you have um, way better components overall um, on an X570 X compared to the B350 and you still have to pay a lot less. So the, um, I think that the, the cheapest X570 is like around $200, yes $200 and for $200 you can get for example an X470 Strix which is a pretty damn good motherboard. And so guys, that's it, not much more to say, you've seen on the benchmarks, you've seen on the, the features, the side-by-side -side comparison. If you are using a mid-end to a high-ish end, let's say, so if you are using, for example, from Ryzen 5 3600 to Ryzen 7, 7 to Ryzen 7 3700X, you are good to go with a B350, with a B450 and with a X. Uh, 370 or X470, no need for an X570. So guys, that's all for today, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video, also, leave a comment on the comment section, tell me what you think about this video and give me some tips for the next one. Thanks a lot for watching one more time and see you in the next one.